Good evening. I'm Bob Baldacci, and welcome to Baldacci on Business. This, believe it or not, is our final show for this season, and I'm very, very pleased uh, tonight to introduce uh, two special guests, good friends of mine. On my immediate left is Steve Woods, uh, a very successful businessman uh, here in uh, uh, Falmouth and Portland area. And Steve is a company called Tide Smart Global. And Fred Forsley, uh, you know Fred is uh, the uh, creator, the owner, president and CEO of Shipyard, uh, one of the best beers, the best beer in the <laughs> state of Maine, mm -hmm. if not the country. And uh, guys, thank you very much for being here. And uh, I think bringing two successful entrepreneurs on the show uh, I, I think is going to be instructive and helpful to our viewing audi audience tonight. To, uh, to hear firsthand from, from you both uh, how you got into business, why you got into business, some of the lessons you, you've learned along the way, and, uh, and some of the challenges you face uh, in running a business here in uh, the greater Portland area. So, uh, Fred, why don't we start with you? Uh, just a little bit of your background. I know right. you're from Maine. You grew right. up in Gray. Yeah, my uh, family had a business in Gray. My dad was a World War II vet. Yep. And he was a psychiatrist, and when he got out of the war, he started a home for veterans. And my mother and he ran it, and uh, as a family, we ran it together. And that was probably the biggest entrepreneurial lesson I ever learned in my uh, life. Working was for it, your parents. Yeah, 24-7. Yep. If there was somebody that didn't show up for the 11 to 7 shift, the, yep. the, somebody needs to cover that shift. So, yep. um, so that was the first. And then uh, from there, I uh, got into real estate. and. Um, through a friend of mine in Gray, Mike yep. Liberty, which we yep. all know. But yep. um, long story short, um, real estate led me into the beer business. So How did that happen? That happened. Uh, a good friend of mine, Gordon Urchabees, was involved in an investment yep. in uh, Kennebunkport, and it was a failed real estate deal in which people had taken a lot of opportunity uh, risk on in the 80s, late 80s, and it uh, just was a little premature. Mm -hmm. The deal had... Uh, was uh, ended up failing and there needed to be something that could work and long story short my brother Richard lives in Pensacola Florida and the brew pub business was just taking off and mm -hmm. I came back with that idea of trying to start a brew pub in kind of So that was your idea Federal Jazz? Well yeah it was uh, was actually my brothers and yeah. Gordon were all having, yeah. having a beer in Pensacola Florida saying this could work in kind of bunk ports. I'll and give so them some credit too. And from there, you developed a Shipyard a Brewery. And that because Kennebunkport was on the harbor, and yeah. there was 12 shipyards in Kennebunkport in the early 1700s. And yeah. Federal Jack was actually a ship that was built in that area. Yeah. And there were actually two of them built in the early 1700s. And that's mm -hmm. how we came up with the name. And, and in 1992, June of 92, we, we created the first shipyard export. I met Alan Pugsley. I uh, actually tried to get Richard and Eddie uh, uh, from Gritty McDuff's to go down there and do it yep. as a real estate play, and I was going to lease it to them, and then they committed to it and then decided they didn't want to do it, and I had met Alan, Alan and uh, so that's how we started. Well, and, and it was a, a huge risk on your part at the time and your partners, but we'll get into that in just a second. Uh, Steve, you're from Away, Boston. I, unless you're born here at Maine, I know that it's impossible to claim uh, being a Mainer, but uh, I, I grew up outside of Boston, Needham, yeah. and have been coming up here my whole life, been here with my wife and three kids for about 12 years, and yeah. I, I wish my career started in the beer business. I'm a little <laughs> jealous of, of Fred, but I started um, really from the early days as, as a paper route. I don't even know if we have paper routes, and so I, sure I used to be an adjunct professor and, 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 and teach business management and one of the one of the lessons I try to impart to young people or people starting out is it's less important what the specific business function is than it is the discipline, the work, the effort and, and just being there. Right. And so I started out as a paper boy. My father had a construction company. I cleaned swimming pools for years, which was fun in July, but in November and December outside of Boston, it was a little little cold. Yeah. Worked at McDonald's for a while. And yeah. today, you can't get a kid to work at McDonald's, but, you know, because right. the sense is, oh, that's not a fun place. McDonald's is fine. They teach you discipline, payroll, organization. You yeah. work two hours, you get a little cheeseburger. Four hours, you get a free Big Mac. <laughs> you learn to, yeah, you decide, well, I better work another hour. I could get the quarter pounder. My wife worked at McDonald's when she started. Yeah, and there's something great. about it. So it's, to me, it's less about 
you know, I, you know, when I look at uh, entrepreneurs that I've worked with or people I respect in business like, like Freddie, I believe that if Fred didn't get involved with restaurants or the brew pub and he got involved with transportation or something else, he would be successful because it wasn't so much the issue of being in one industry, it was the skill set and the discipline that really drove and created the foundation for success. Yeah, that's, that's terrific. That's, that's, a great, uh, that's a great point, Steve. Uh, to pick up on, on, on what you just said and a little bit more about your background, I mean, you've been heavily engaged with, uh, with Tide Smart uh, Global mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Falmouth. Uh, you're developing a significant uh, facility there, uh, $10 million worth, at least in real estate, sure. eventually. Uh, doing work all over the United States. You've represented uh, uh, professional athletes in NFL, Major League Baseball. I was an NBA baseball. agent. I was a Major League Baseball. I ran sports events for years. Right. I taught sports marketing. Was heavily involved with that. Yeah. So, as as a you know, making that commitment to uh, to Falmouth, making that commitment to the state of Maine, uh, how are th how have things worked out for you in that regard? Couldn't be better. Originally, yeah. I started my business in the old port uh, here in Portland. Yeah. And like many entrepreneurs, it was, it was myself, a plastic table, yeah. and a phone that we bought at Radio Shack. And the phone worked half the time. <laughs> Added a person, another person, the business grew. We moved into another office down in Portland. And then two and a half years ago, I had an opportunity to buy a property up in Falmouth. I live right. in Yarmouth, so there was... You know, it was probably me being lazy more than anything else because I only have a two-mile commute now. You know, not that traffic in, in southern Maine is anything to complain about. But I decided to invest in the area because in my business, which is marketing and uh, health care and health and wellness, most agencies and most companies lease space. They, and, that, and that's a fine business paradigm. It gives you flexibility. If you pick up account, if you pick up business, you increase your space. If you lose, you close the office. But I wanted to make a commitment to the area, and more importantly, I wanted to make a commitment to all the employees that work with me, because mm -hmm. in my business, it's very people-based. Yeah. And so we bought some property in Falmouth, and you know, for all the complaints about government, that it seems like that's the, that's the current sport du jour. Mm -hmm. uh, in my case, government helped. Mm -hmm. you know, SBA loan support, they didn't give me money, but they basically guaranteed a low rate threshold. A pine tree program that right. uh, created a benefit for me to hire people. And then, as you're aware, two and a half years ago, uh, your brother, when he was governor, came out for the groundbreaking. Yep. And the idea that a governor of a state would come out to, um, he didn't have to come out, but he came out and he spent two or three hours. He said, This is great for me. Little things like that contribute, um, I think, contribute in a very big way to a business climate that can be positive doesn't have to be negative as right. long as you know because hope and imagination are some of the big drivers mm -hmm. there's always going to be obstacles every government whether it's low every municipality has their burdens I wish there wasn't so much red tape but throughout the red tape there's also positive elements and in right. my case um, I'm very happy being in Falmouth it's a great community to build a business I live in the community next door Yarmouth, which yep. is a great community to raise my family. And uh, in my case, it's just worked out really well. I know it has. Mm. And he's done it Go at ahead. a time when the economy was imploding. I mean, he literally right. took, I mean, if people know that area where he bought, um, down Route 1, north of, really north of the shopping mall, it was all um, Undeveloped a big land. rock pile. A rock pile. He blasted it and put, you know, three years ago when the, the economy was imploding. And I've been extremely impressed with what Steve and the other EMG3, which is the other company, That's he's right. one of the only people when young people call where there's an opportunity to work in Maine, he's, one, he's provided that. So he uh, you know, only, only talks about it. it, it's very, very impressive what he was able to do during these economic times the last three years. That, which so. has been tough. And Fred, as a Chevrolet graduate, <laughs> has helped me greatly because every, every, like every two or three weeks I get an email saying, Mr. Woods, I went to Chevrolet and uh, one of the alumni, Fred Forsley, said I should. Uh, and the reality is we've hired a lot of people from Chevrolet yeah. because yeah. of re references and recommendations yeah. from Fred, so that's been a byproduct. 
Yeah, yeah. And he should add that he has represented some of the major companies in the world. That That's right. He does He's, work for them. Steve from, is a little from, Steve's a little low key with yeah. uh, some of his accomplishments, but you're yeah. right. You're absolutely right, Fred. Yeah. No. And I I think you know when you talk about business and business, and this is what this show is about. Having having people and mentors that can say, hey, you can do it from Maine, which are companies like obviously LL Bean and. Uh, you know, a good friend of um, from uh, of mine, George Denny, with Cole Han yep. Chu. I mean, there's a guy who created a global, a major brand from Maine, Freeport, Maine, and uh, and That's succeeded. Right. And obviously, there are others. Long Freddie, ago. who was your who was your mentor? George Denny was a, was a mentor of mine, and yep. and and Gordon Hertzbees, and yep. and Mike Liberty, and um, yep. um, some older guys like uh, Jimmy Vassell on the Sportsman's Grill. And, mm -hmm. Friends of my uh, dad, that um, Gus Barber was another one who I mm -hmm. was, yeah, and got lucky enough to meet at a young age and um, got to see his brand in Florida, what they did with the uh, the you know his products, the frozen uh, chicken. I was in Barbara Naples, Foods. Florida, 15, 16 years ago, really? and, and it, you know makes you believe that you can do that for me. Yeah. So, you know, I was with uh, George Denny in Florida, you know, 18 years ago. We walked into a clothing store and there was a shoe department he walked in there was a big display of Colhan shoes and he walked up with a smile on his face and started talking to the guy and the guy immediately knew who he was and I was really? blown away because we were in Tampa Florida and it yeah. was you know it was an amazing to for me you know at that time especially that you know we didn't have all the technology then you didn't have the today I think there's an advantage using social media and other things that instantly things can spread you know across across the globe but then it was a little a little slower and um, yeah. so but it, it you know it made you believe that if you created a brand or a product that you could actually you know compete in Florida or California which is what places. you're doing now with you know, shipyard doing yeah which is pretty exciting yeah it is we have some great success and Maine can play to your strength we recently have a talk kid. about that yeah I mean and, we had, and I'd sure. like you to talk, talk I think about the call sure. the colleges that are in Maine when you look at the University of Maine system yeah but when you look at Bates, Bowden, Cobley, the kids that go to school there, the alumni from there, um, we actually just recently did a deal with Fess Parker. Fess Parker's daughter went to um, Bates, and Bruce Forsley, my cousin, uh, met her um, husband, and through that, we actually have developed a strategic alliance where we're going to represent their wines in Maine and, and Massachusetts, and they're going to represent our beers in California. Very we came up with a label called Chickadee Wines, and they're going to actually source the grapes for us. And so it, it happened from her um, being in in uh, Maine at Bates, and I think that our education system, whether it's the, um, is one of our biggest assets. Mm -hmm. Whether it's what uh, University of New England's doing with their with their new schools and the existing school, and uh, I think the university system, University of Maine system. You know, is obviously um, in a transition or under has been under attack recently locally, the USM. But yeah. I think University of Southern Maine has come a long way mm -hmm. from um, what it was when when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. It wasn't as much of an option necessarily. You didn't. And today, I think University of Southern Maine is is even with the challenges that uh, the system's going under right now is is a strong option. Sure and is. the schools, Bates, Bowden, Colby. Um, and then and the other things are our biggest asset. Our people mm -hmm. are our biggest asset. Unfortunately, I think they're our biggest export right now. So and we had to turn we had to turn that around. I was that's and right. And we yeah. also Steve, have to yeah. have an editorial note. You mentioned Fess Parker. Yeah. And for the thousands of people watching that may be a little younger than yeah. three of us, it was Daniel Boone. <laughs> Daniel Boone. David Crockett. Crockett. David Crockett. David Crockett. David Crockett. Was yeah. Because yeah. thousands of people are going Fess Parker. That sounds interesting. Yeah. Who, who is, is that? Who thanks, is for, thanks for yeah. clarifying that. I just want to keep that. track of the score right. because I love Fess Parker. Yes. Right. I did. As he was well. one of Disney's first stars, and he had made a lot of money in the 50s and 60s and bought. Um, a lot of property in the Santa Barbara area and other areas, and he's turned. Great. They've, they've turned some at the wineries. Great, and, vi great vineyard. And, uh, and to add to, to add to Fred's point, over the last 35 years of my business career, I've been fortunate enough to uh, work in all 50 states. That in itself is, is a little unusual, and, and certainly Alaska and and Hawaii and some of the non. You know, we're, we're, uh, it's, it's a little contiguous. more usual, non-contiguous. But my business is taking me literally and figuratively to all 50 states, mm. yeah. also 20 countries. And so when I tell people that Maine is a special place, it's not coming from a pers perspective where I'm just being loyal to where my kids have grown up or where I live or where my business is. 
in my in my mind, Maine is the best state, and I just love living in Maine. Mm -hmm. And part of it is what Fred said is we we've got you know some natural resources that are very very unique, but a lot of it is the combination of the history, the legacy of Maine, which, which there's there's a heritage and a legacy that, that I think goes into the DNA of Mainers, mm -hmm. one of the first work colonies. There's a work ethic. There's to live in Maine 240 years ago was hard. Yeah. People forget about in terms of you know, the settlement because now we've got iPhones and TVs and there's modern technology. But when the country was founded and when Maine was first settled in Yarmouth, you drive down the street and you see houses with historic plates saying 1820, 1780. Back then, there was no computer, electricity, there weren't cars, there were horses, they used water, mills for generating. So it was, a, it was a hard life, but it was a good life. And there's something about that spirit from 240 years back mm -hmm. then that, that impacts our way of life now. And so when I travel around and I meet with other companies and I meet with people that I'm either recruiting as employees or clients, everyone said there's something a little bit mythical about Maine, which I just don't, without any criticism of New Jersey, I don't know if anyone from New Jersey is watching, <laughs> I just don't know if other states have that same sense. Right. Because in Maine, there is something special. When I, you know, yes. I grew up in Boston, which I don't admit very much, but when I drive up 95, and 128 is getting a little shabby, and obviously they have a bigger economy, and with that there's many other uh, issues in terms of their infrastructure. But then I go through New Hampshire, things feel a little bit better, yeah. and then, you know, people, you know, but then as soon as you get over from New Hampshire, whether it's the Clean Air Act without the billboards, whether it's how we treat our highways, whether it's how the rest stops are in Kenny Bunkport, or, you know, it feels different, and that reflects on the spirit of Maine, and it reflects on the business environment. So I never, talk about or even even uh, acknowledge or tolerate when people say, oh boy, living in Maine or working in Maine, isn't that tough? It's not tough. You well, have what to, about you, the you, business, I mean, the Maine, business Maine, Maine gets attacked because of the high taxes, the regulations, and I want to, mm. be, because for those of you out there uh, watching, aspiring to be in business, uh, you, you're going to have to deal with government. You're going to have to deal with government at the local, state, and federal level. Now, you can either close your eyes, bury your head in the sand, uh, or do like these gentlemen have done, and that's to get involved and to, and to be proactive in your community. And I want to talk a little bit about that, because you've been a real model here in Portland, uh, Steve, and in the state, and, uh, Steve, Fred, <laughs> uh, in terms of your commitment, your commitment to the community, your commitment to the, to the state, and a variety of uh, yeah, I, Talk I, a little bit I about agree that. with Steve in, in a lot of ways that Maine is a great place. I feel, though, that to a degree, our government has to see who they're competing against a little bit. I feel like, especially at the state level from a tax standpoint, yep. and that we've got to get competitive with New Hampshire. We've got to get competitive in the sense of what we're charging for state income taxes. I think we we have great people the process needs to be simplified to a degree if we're going to grow business i personally have seen a lot of my friends um, take their businesses and leave or not grow businesses in maine i think steve is a great great model of a guy who's figured out how to make it work to his advantage in maine and i think it's a great great thing and we need more businesses like steve's and like you and like and like shipyard but i feel it's challenging, and I, I think that I hope that government in Maine, because we are small enough, could figure out how to partner um, more in the future. And I think some communities are really seeing that and, and taking advantage of that. And I, in my lifetime, I've seen Portland is one of the best cities in the world, in my opinion. I don't, there's no question. The problem is, I think that most of Portland, the, the, when you look at retail, a great amount of it's gone to South Portland, which is, which is great. In my lifetime, Congress Street was where was you that? came to shop. I grew up in Gray, and we always came to Congress Street. Now, you know, towns like Falmouth, Yarmouth, Scarborough have become retail centers, mm -hmm. as well as South Portland, and Portland's lost a big chunk of that. Portland's lost a number of the downtown businesses yep. for a variety of reasons. That, that we've either gone to Westbrook, whether you look at the Idexes and Wright Express and some of these. Consequently, um, but in the meantime, you've had this explosion of the foodie community in Portland, and, 
and the beer community. Right. And I, I relate that to the people that say Portland's a great place to live. I've experienced other places. I want to come back to Maine because I grew up here. I want to come here because my wife was from here. And I'm going to create something special. And there, there's a list of uh, people that are doing that, and, uh, and it's a great thing. I think it could be even be better if there was a degree of saying, listen, uh, we're going to work closer with figuring out how you can be more competitive by making the playing field more level when you're competing against other areas. It's a good, it's a I don't want to go to move to New Jersey, and I don't, I don't feel that, um, you know, you look at Boston, it's an hour and a half away, and there's got to be a way um, for us to, to take the positive out of that economic um, you, know, you look at the, 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 the colleges that are there and what they've done and how they've spurred business off yeah. of that. Leveraging that in a greater way, um, like I was talk we were talking earlier about uh, President Rippage of the University of New England. There's a great example of somebody who came to uh, an academic from the University of New England and has really grown that dramatically to the benefit of the greater Portland area. Oh, yeah. And that is going to pay dividends for, for a long time. I think the more we enhance those opportunities for people mm -hmm. that come in and, and or that are here and support the businesses that are here, I think it's great. You know, I get real concerned when I see certain businesses downsizing in Portland when we can't really afford for that to happen. St Steve, respond to some of the things that Fred talked about in terms of government and, and uh, tax issues and things sure. like that. And then, bef But I, I do want to interject. This gentleman on my left, is going to be a candidate for the United States Senate as an independent, and uh, I'm excited about it. I've known Steve for a while, and uh, and I'm I'm excited to have uh, to have him involved in this race. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, so go ahead. But to Fred's point about government policy, I, I am currently chairman of the Yarmouth Town Council. So on a very micro level, and really, government is basically. Um, components of, of different enterprise, whether it's Yarmouth or the county being Cumberland County or the state and every enterprise has its own infrastructure. Yep. One of the challenges that Maine has is we have basically a weak economic engine powering a huge infrastructure. You could take almost the other four states in New England and fit them into the landmass of, of Maine. So part of this is policy. I do think we need to be more competitive. I do think that we need to attract um, more advanced industries. We need to look forward over the next 20, 30, 40 years. And if you look back over the last 40 years, there's all kinds of shifts. We're going from an industrial uh, complex to technology, to cloud-based, to web-based, we need to have the vision and we need to have the government that provides the resources to let businesses and small businesses grow. I think 95% of the economy in Maine is driven by small businesses. And so, you know, whether it's, but part of it is, is up to the individual too. I've known That's Fred right. now for five years and, and uh, it was funny, before, before we came on the air, the producer said, make sure you shut off all your phones. I'm going to exaggerate, but to make a point, Fred carries like six phones. <laughs> and so <laughs> it, it was like, well, two. <laughs> but he's the only person, and I get emails from Fred at 4 a.m., yeah. And, he, and and it's not because he's out. Seriously? It's not because he's out the night before. No. It's because he's working. You have I to work hard. Out. You know, I go out to Peaks Island and there's a restaurant there and it says, "Do you know Fred? This is Fred's restaurant." I told last weekend I was in Nantucket with Katie and the kids, and there was a sea dog, and I sent a text to Fred. Fred, is this yours? Yep, I licensed it to a friend. The people that really succeed, you know, the government should do a better job of taking away the hurdles for business right. to succeed. But for, for, for me, I'd rather see we get away from some of the excuses and say, it's there. We have a good labor force. We have loyal people. If you're in Maine, generally you're here for a reason. Right. You were born here. Your family's here. You love lobster, skiing. And so we don't have a transient population other than an outflow of, of, of college-level students. So for my company, we're all about people. If I hire somebody... They're not going to wake up one day and go, I may go live in Vermont, or I may go live in New Jersey. Whereas in other communities, Boston has New York, L.A. has Las Vegas and Oakland. So I love Maine, Bob. I know you do. I'm like that, a cheerleader. That, that comes through. And 
We only have, believe it or not, guys, oh, we only it. have like two or three minutes wow. left. Oh, wow. You're running for the U.S. Senate in a very crisp, concise uh, uh, statement. Why? Well, when Olympia Snow announced that she wanted to, um, to get out of politics effectively by not running for a fourth term, um, it resonated with me. Her reason was that she felt as though politics and government was being paralyzed by, and I'm paraphrasing here, by the negativity and by partisan politics. I've been an independent literally, figuratively, emotionally, I'm just independent. And so I'm running as an independent because I believe that what's happening in Washington and what's happening in the state and what's happening all across the country is um, we, we've lost sight of what the issues are. We've lost sight of the business issues, the political issues, the government issues. And truthfully, I think the government's only part of the answer. I think everyone watching tonight is the bigger part of the answer. We have 1.3 million approximately people in, um, in Maine. We have about 917 registered voters. In the last presidential national election in 2008, about 750,000 people voted. My challenge to every single voter is to get involved. Vote for me, vote for Angus, vote for one of the Republican or Democratic candidates. But don't just vote out of a knee-jerk reaction because there's a D letter or an R letter or an I letter. Or don't just vote because Angus seems like a nice guy. I have great respect for what Governor King did in his, his time in office, but that was 10 years ago. I really want everyone to be engaged in this election looking at the issues. Good. And um, I'm excited about participating, and my daughter, Cammy, who's 12, is my cam manager, she's my campaign is, manager, cool. <laughs> and it's about the future. And it's yeah. not just a hokey thing. I think, you know, for us and for many people watching that are in their 40s or 50s, we'll get through the tough economy and $8 gas prices are $4. But for kids who are 12 and 4 and 8, the future is theirs, and that's what right. I want to fight for. We, we're, we're, we're done. done. Awesome. We're done. Great. And I... Uh, Thank this you. has been a great show. Thank you. It's been a great show. Thank I, you I so wanted much. you to try to get the last word in. No, here, no, no. That's good. I'm glad, Steve. Steve Excellent, Steve. Steve. No, thank you very much, Bob. Really? Yeah, that was great. Yeah. That's I wish we could. I wish. We, next I wish, time. Next season. Yeah. I wish we had an hour. <laughs> I wish we had an hour. Then we because, should come back. Because well, next season. But I. But there's a lot to. I mean, we just scratched. <laughs>